Welcome to Lucy. This game is like, um, kind of reminds me of uh, Ib and like the old RPG games like um, The Crooked Man and stuff like that. And um, also it reminds me of Undertale, obviously, so let's uh, start playing. Direct with objects, press in space. Okay. Items prepared. Sigil, incense, parchment needed, seven black candles, and a red key. Where do I go? There we go. They're gonna... Oh, I don't have any. Prologue Part 1. August 24th, 18 and 25. My wife and I have been going through many hardships recently. She is finally pregnant after many failed attempts to have children, and it is the only thing that has been able to keep me going. My boss has let up at work due to the construction of the new bridge in London, demanding more and more manpower. I've been staying for longer hours at work with no overtime pay. All for the hopes of saving enough for my future family. I've hardly been able to scrounge together enough to bring home the smallest of rations for my wife. And she's been very sick recently. It's been here. Uh, it's been bearing on my mind and psyche quite a bit. And I've got no idea as to what to do. Banks have been closing left and right all around me, and it's all just too much. Did he die or something? Like, end his life because he couldn't, you know, couldn't handle it. Okay. Ooh. A little ominous. Ooh, it's a little ominous. There's a green key here. Ooh, what is that for? Prologue, two out of four. August 24th, 1825. My only vestige of light amongst all of this is Luke. He is my best friend and my best man. If there is anyone who I can seek advice from, it is him. Other than my wife, I wouldn't know what else to do with myself, as my father is a useless nut. My mind tends to play tricks on me. Ever since I was a child, Luke is the only man who has ever been able to get me to come to. He has a special ability in order to make it seem like my visions of greater purpose are smaller than my than they seem. My father was similar and what I wouldn't give to not end up like him. I never understood my father, nor did my mother. He was an obsessive doll maker. A quite respectable one at that, if you could even call it so. Given the nature of his occupation, it was hard to find work. 
let alone find people who didn't find it inherently peculiar. peculiar. Thus, I wasn't taught much as to what it means to be a man. If I were ever to to have a son, I would teach him, rightfully so, how to be a hard-working, honest man. Okay. Just want to see what's down here real quick. Prologue 3 out of 4. August 24th, 1825. During my childhood, I used to find dolls my father left behind. Many with their chests ripped out, laying strung out across his workshop. I personally found this behavior quite peculiar, but he often laid waste to little ones who questioned the method to his madness. Whatever illness that man has inherited, I sure hope to not develop either. But it seems like it is only a matter of time, according to Luke. Luke is a very intelligent man. Seldom do I question his line of thought. He always seems to see right through me, and I find it quite disturbing at times, in all honesty. He is a candle maker and an architect, a quiet ingenious one at that. He infrequently shows me his personal mass collection too, which he only allow certain folks to see. I digress, as the candles he crafts are beautiful, but he specializes in making them black. I've never seen the likes of a black candle before, but I find it quite charming as the wax itself hides in the dark and the wick is the only thing illuminated in the vast darkness of my mansion. I mean, this is a long one. This mansion was passed down to me from my father. Aside from the doll doll work, the only thing of value my father ever owned was this damn mansion. Henry. Let's see what's in here. Oh no. Maybe I shouldn't go down this one. All these dolls. All the excuse me. Chapter one, part one, September blank, nineteen twenty five. My wife is making quite the night. The nice headway in her pregnancy. She is so gorgeous, her nightgown looks just like the dress she wore on our wedding day. With the light of the moon illuminating her every step, she is stunning as ever, with her flowing brown hair and beautiful angelic eyes that are as dark as Luke's candles. One quirk that adds her to her abject beauty is that she is quite a lucid one at night. She often rummages around making this awful scraping noise and that keeps me awake for some bouts at a time. She loves making this one drink or concoction rather that requires arduous amounts of work to make. Gosh, this, she, this person really loves big words, don't they? It puts her to sleep, so who am I to question it? God be damned if I can't get more sleep at the end of the day. Luke gifted us this drink's ingredients as a wedding gift, which is extremely th- thoughtful. He, As he is well aware of my wife's sleeping issues amongst her illness. Be it the mansion making her illness worse with its oppressive amounts of dust and cobwebs, but I can always thank Luke for knowing what's best. Thank God I can always rely on him.
for many things unlike my father. My mother, the mother wife. Am I like the wife? Oh, I actually like this little, this little game that they have right here. Okay. Was that it? Chapter 1, Part 3. September, question mark, question mark, question mark, 1825. Aside from Luke's ingenious craft, look, Luke was always one of that attracted, attracted many from young to old. I don't mean by love, but as a man who was a magnet to many who sought out his deep knowledge of seemingly, well, everything. These often ended in gatherings of many with my wife, unknowingly, unknowing as she despised Luke. In his character, which I am admit that he is not as she sees it. Nothing will get in the way of my dearest Luke and I, not even my wife. Luke helped us get to where we are today, and I wouldn't be able to put food on the table if it weren't for him. Luke knows best. Luke always knows. Luke always K knows. Whoa. This dude is obsessive, isn't he? Let me see. About right down here. deal with ghosts. Chapter 2, Part 1. October 31st, 1825. My wife has been acting strange lately. She's always been quite the strange one, but never like this. Before, it's making me quite unsure about the pregnancy, but Luke has assured me it's fine. I've always been one to trust my wife. I'm sure it'll end up all right as long as Luke is by, is by my side, aiding my family. My father hasn't exactly been hopeful throughout the entire menagerie of stress either, as his doll obsession has somehow become more intense. At least my job has loosened up, so I can at least look forward to finishing that damned bridge sometime soon, hopefully, as an escape from the trouble, ba trouble at home after I get back from work. I've been moon gazing quite a lot recently something about it is so alluring and beautiful as there is a hilltop outside the mansion that is ideal for stargazing or in my case moon gazing the crickets oh the mansion sorry the crickets are soothing to my mind and help with the head pains and visions Chapter 2, Part 2, October 31st, 1825. Luke has told me much about the moon, which is why I've held such intrigue for it ever since. There is a story that he tells me about the moon, a delinquent amongst the celestial bodies that causes mischief. 
I am not entirely sure if I believe it, but stories are stories. The moon believe reminds me much of what life would be like if my father didn't end up like the way he was. I've always pitied him, but in a similar fashion to the moon. He was quite like it in the sense that he reflected the light that he was my mother. In the bastions of his normal self, he was quite reminiscent of her better personality traits. For lack of better words, he always seemed to appreciate the beauty of my mother, even if he was always lost in the crafting of his dolls. My mother was always a kind, gentle soul. Very much a homebody, but someone who cared deeply about those around her. She quite often played at the piano, and you could hear the serenade in the vastness of the mansion. It was something my wife learned to play in order to hopefully be able to soothe our family in some same fashion. Do not want to see you real quick. Chapter 2, Part 3 October 31st, 1825 My mother was someone who was like the pepper to my father's salt. My starry-eyed mother always seemed to be there for me when my father wasn't exactly all there. Luke was there for me in her wait, in her steed, and this was not by her own will. My mother passed by my father entering a blind rage once. She was finally finished with his obsession over his dolls and tried to put an end to it. She looked like a thimble after he was finished with her, with her head barely remnant, resembling a skull afterwards. A pin cushion most closely resembled her stomach. It's nothing short of a million needles stuffed and sewed into the flesh of her womb by the time the moon rose. The echoes of her ribcage being ripped open in the middle of the night is a sound I'll never forget. She looked just like one of those damn dolls when I discovered her body. I'll never forget that day, nor will Luke. Those dolls will pay for it. Henry. So I'm Henry. Cause I gotta talk to her. Oh. I was going to do all this reading. Part Chapter 3, Part 1, March 16th, 1864, Miss 26. My wife and I have concealed. I invited Luke over to our mansion for dinner and we worked things out between us and to hopefully find a solution to her illness before giving birth to our son. I hope it stays this way. However, the scrap scraping at night has become more intense the further the pregnancy has come along. Despite this reconciliation, I can't help but think that something is seriously wrong with my beloved wife. Even my Luke is at his wit's end. Even with his, his extensive knowledge, he can't seem to help her. At last, though, the damn bridge has been finished. I can finally focus on things at home until I find more work. On top of the ongoing issues, my father fell with an illness similar to my wife, and I certainly couldn't care less. He passed away around a week ago, and I can't wait to finally get rid of those dolls. These dolls. I buried him out 
in the garden next to mother as I'm sure before he fell to his psychosis that they were happy together I was often told t bedtime stories about the better days between the two of them I hope I don't end up like my father I certainly wouldn't want to end up falling short of the expectations I've set for myself okay chapter 3 part 2 March 16, 1826. In spite of all the happenings, Luke's visits have been more frequent. I often see him when the moon rises to its apex, where we frequently discuss things like work, my, f my wife's illness, and how to possibly cure it, and why it killed my father so quickly. He always seems to have something to speak of my father. It was like, Speak of. My father was like this as well, always rambling about his dolls. But Luke was, Luke has such an tantamount way of speaking. It's like that of a siren singing her song. It's just so beautiful. I can't get enough of it. He makes everything seem all right, and he always shows me what new things he's making as a skilled craftsman. On top of making candles, Luke makes gorgeous masks. As I've mentioned before, he has an amazing collection of them amongst his own that he's crafted himself. Many of them I simply cannot make out, but they are gorgeous because he made them. When I think of Luke, I can't exactly recall what he looks like. He just is. He is always there. Luke is my best friend. Luke. Henry. That was really weird. Okay. Oh my. There's a lot of dolls here. Chapter 4, Part 1. March 21st, 1826. My wife is due for birth today. I've never been more ecstatic before in my whole life. I could have never wished more for a son. There's a full moon out tonight as well, and I'll be sure to take that as a good omen. I wish to raise this boy right. Unlike my father, we've decided between two names as we're for certain that he's going to be a boy. We're stuck between Luke and Richard, but I myself prefer Luke. Richard was her father's name, and Luke is a man I looked up to with the utmost respect. He taught me everything I know, and is the main, re main reason I've got the job I, f I do now. He's like a father to me. I could be more grateful for this blessed moment between my lo beloved wife and I. Welcome into the world, Luke. Henry. Okay, then. Medical record. Husband and pregnant wife admitted into the hospital. Wife gave birth to twins. One being female and one being male. Also, I'm the female one. However, due to unforeseen circumstances, the male fetus and mother passed away. The female fetus was saved. Seeing his wife in this state of blood at birth, this caused the father to enter a state of psychotic rage. He was muttering some nonsense about a greater purpose before entering the state. Before the procedure could be completely completed entirely and the other doctors were able to cut the umbilical cords, the father ripped away the doctors and shouted unintelligible slurs about the mother being another one of his father's dolls. Ooh. 
He proceeded to take a nearby scalpel and tear open the mother's stomach down to the vagina for seemingly two reason at all for seemingly no reason at all taking the umbilical cords with them. This presumably killed what was left of the mother. As for the male fetus, it was declared dead by the operating doctors as they were able to examine him immediately after the mother had given birth. The father ran out with the twins and hasn't been seen since. Ooh. Okay, now that, that's a turn. Okay, so she might get killed by her dad. Okay. This is actually a good game. Oh. Ooh. Is she like a demonic child. May 21st, 1836. My mother died today, 10 years ago. The day I was born, my father still blames me for it to this day. He always, he always blames me for getting mother sick too, and it makes me sad. He knew he, she was sick. He always just gave her that stupid drink Uncle Luke gave him. Father still drinks that concoction Uncle Luke gave to mother. I'm still convinced that was the reason why she died and why she got sick in the first place. My father was never the same ever since I was born, according to Uncle Luke. Uncle Luke always tells me how much my father wishes he could have had a son instead. Wow. I always wonder if Uncle Luke knows why my father ended up like that on me on the day my, father, my mother gave birth to me. I know my father hates me, but he keeps giving me boys clothes and all the kids make fun of me for it. I hate it. I hate everyone. This stupid journal is the only well, is the only friend I have aside from the moon. My father always tells me that Uncle Luke will always be there for me, but he just feels like another face amongst the rest. I try to please my father by trying to be nice to Uncle Luke, but every time I speak to him it just always seems like he's talking to Luke wait is Luke's like short for Lucius or something even when my father weeps at night and calls to his whiskey bottle he calls me Luke I can't escape it even at school Lucy the d disease Lucy be gone with ease Lucy Come home with me forever, will your father be pleased? And the moon shall internally dance with glee. O oh, great mother, be bequeath thine ch children, for Lucy shall be risen, and the f great father's mission shall be complete. At night, when I hear the crickets chirping, I like to go see the moon. The moon feels like my only friend in this world accompanied by another friend being this journal so the song it sings to me makes me feel the way a friend is supposed to feel i try to avoid my father at night but when i sneak out to see the moon but i often get lost 
The mansion always makes noises. It almost feels like it's breathing. More often than not, I find these black candles scattered about, but they are so hard to see. It feels like my mind is playing tricks on me. It's a very strange occurrence, but I can't sleep, can't help, but think that it has something to do with that awful ritual my father won't shut up about. He says that Uncle Luke told him about it and that it's a family tradition. Suddenly one day his attitude completely flipped about it. It was after my fifth birthday. He could he wouldn't shut up about it. He often talks with Uncle Luke in the living room as I can overhear their conversation almost every evening. Okay, this one's longer than I thought. He says that it will bring Luke back, and, Luke, and Uncle Luke says so as well. I simply can't escape living in Luke's shadow. I can't take it anymore. I honestly just wish this disease would take me away already. I can't stand being around these two nutcases anymore. They probably wouldn't miss me anyway. I think tonight will be the night I will finally try and escape this place. I can't keep living in Luke's shadow anymore. I hate this mansion and everything in it. This journal will be the only thing I take with me as it's been the closest thing to a friend I have. Lucy. That was a good game. Um, hopefully y'all liked it too. Uh, if y'all did, like, comment, subscribe, and uh, I'll see y'all in the next one. Thank you.